So yeah, it's been quite some time since I've talked about Cyberpunk 2077, but guess what? We have actual news about the game, including this one right here that Cyberpunk 2077 is getting a new director to oversee the game's update. Who is it? We're gonna be talking about this guy here and his previous work does it mean good news for Cyberpunk in the future. Plus, we actually did get an update about what's going on for Cyberpunk. This was CD Projekt Red actually addressing their investors. Uh, we have an updated roadmap and stability improvement uh, taken from the CDPR quality, uh, quarter one, excuse me, 2021 financial results document. So we're gonna talk about that in just a moment, uh, plus a bunch of other stuff as well, how Cyberpunk's actually performing and what the future looks like. So let's dive in right now. Hey everyone, what's happening? Open World Games here, hope you're doing good. And yes, we're talking about Cyberpunk, believe it or not. Let's get into the news about the brand new game director. This news comes from, of course, that recent financial call. And this article is from Screen Rant. Here we go. It says, Cyberpunk 2077 has gotten a new director to oversee the game's recovery through future updates. The behind-the-scenes shakeup for Cyberpunk comes after the departure of former Quest director Matsu Thomas. I don't even, I'm not, <laughs> I don't even know how to say that name. But anyway, uh, yeah, the former Quest director departed and he will be replaced by Gabriel Amategalo as the game's overall director. Now, Cyberpunk 2077 has had no shortage of controversies, no kidding, I think, since launching in December 2020. The game was highly anticipated as one of the uh, titles that would define the entire generation and revolutionize the RPG genre. Yes, that is true. And you guys know how it went uh, with Cyberpunk, and of course, uh, some people have left the team, I'm still watching that to see how many people actually leave CD Projekt Red, but so far it's been pretty normal considering things that have happened. However, who is this Gabriel guy and what is his previous history? Uh, so he has worked on Dragon Age Inquisition DLC. And uh, if we go to Reddit, we had a question uh, right here. This is what I was wondering and some opinions about this. Bombardier says this, is that good or bad? Never played Dragon Age. And Dunstan says the guy made the Trespasser DLC for Dragon Age Inquisition. It is quite good. Some say even better than the base game. So this could actually bode well for cyberpunk in the future also i would imagine that some of the core team you know people that have left uh recently uh probably have been quite burned out by uh, what has happened uh, with cyberpunk 2077 of course it seems like this guy has been on uh cd project red for quite some time it's just that you haven't heard about him until now so hopefully he can get the game in really good shape over the next coming months uh to a year and we'll see how what happens with cyberpunk now what about the future so we do have an updated uh, roadmap here. It's a kind of an update, but this comes from the recent financial call. It says, updated roadmap and stability improvements taken from CD Projekt Red Quarter 1 2021 uh, financial results document. Thank you to Neo did it first for posting this. And we see here, if we scroll down, of course, we've been through the hot fixes and stuff like that, but we're going to be getting free DLCs. There's an asterisk by that which means small additional content. So remember, it's gonna be small additional content right there. But we're also gonna be getting the new gen edition coming uh, here between the later half, I guess you would say, of 2021, possibly early 2022. But it would be cool if they can nail down a Christmas release date for the new gen edition. So I think that's what they're gonna be working on hardcore. First and foremost, focusing on the new gen edition, which may or may not come with DLC, but I would imagine it would come with a lot of improvements. Uh, in other words, they may try to actually re-release this game fall 2021 or early 2022, spring 2022. That's my assessment of the situation. We'll see what happens uh, with that one. Now, let's keep going and talk about, of course, what is going on with the relationship between CD Projekt Red and PlayStation. As you guys know, Sony removed uh, Cyberpunk 2077 from the PlayStation Store. It's still not on the PlayStation Store, which is mind-blowing. So we do have an update about what's going on with that one from this article right here from DualShocker. So we're going to go ahead and scroll down to the quote. Uh, right here and get straight into it. So it goes on to say the following. It says today's 
Uh, today, during the quarterly earnings call for quarter one 2021, CD Projekt Red executives have provided fans with an update about the entire Sony debacle. CD Projekt Red has mentioned that to get the game released on the PlayStation Store, there are certain conditions that need to be met. Now, they didn't really say what the conditions are, but apparently they're not there yet. Uh, so it says this, what these conditions are isn't specified, but CD Projekt Red has assured that they are in the middle of the entire process. Conversations are underway and the developers will make an official announcement when the game is ready to be listed on PlayStation Store once again. What's more interesting is the fact that Washington Post reporter Gene Park had inquired Sony about the same and didn't get any response as such. Gene Park says this, I've asked Sony a while ago what it would take for Cyberpunk to get back on its store and I got zero response, lol. Now, Steven Tolio also says about getting back on PSN, C Product Red says they there are metrics Sony needs them to hit. We cannot go into the details of where we are with that, but there is a process. We're in the middle of it. Conversations are happening. The decision will be announced when it's ready to be announced. So what is your opinion on this one? Here's my uh, assessment of the situation. I honestly think again that they're going to be looking at the re-release. I guess you would call it a re-release of uh, this new gen version as a way to get it on the Sony marketplace. And they did say, they confirmed that a lot of their sales come from PC anyway, 85% of their sales come from PC uh, and sales right now are actually not looking good. There's some more updates about that one. So let's talk about how um, Cyberpunk is actually performing right now. So Cyberpunk Maker reports slump in quarterly profit amid PlayStation delisting. Oh, really? You don't say? Hmm. So that's not a surprise whatsoever. But if we get into this, uh, let's dive into the article. It's actually quite fascinating because there are some new details about what's going on here. Now, it says this. This all comes from that financial call. It goes on to say the following. CD Projekt did not say how many units of Cyberpunk it sold uh, in the quarter. That's not a good indication. Whenever they're really private about their sales number, usually companies like to boast about that to encourage investors. Now it says the company's chief financial officer, Hator uh, Nile West, blah, blah, says told a conference call that about 60% of the first quarter product sales came from Cyberpunk sales without providing details. Now it says analysts have said sales were likely low due to Cyberpunk's absence from the PlayStation Store and release a major patch just in late March. Now it says the following, the general situation as long as we are not back on the Sony store has not changed. One of the leading marketplace for us is not available and we generate most of the sales on PC digital channels. So they are very worried still about, uh, you know, not being on the PlayStation store. Now it says net profit in the first quarter fell 64.7% to 32.5 million zealots. I wish I had uh, dollar amounts there, but it says well below the 80 million uh, zealots expected by analysts. That is a huge difference right there. That's got to hurt. So they were off the projections by a lot. Of course, that was impacted by depreciation of cyberpunk development and working on fixing the game. Revenue fell 2%. Oh, there's the 53.94 million. So uh, yeah, they have really been hit hard by, of course, the mistakes made during launch and with this game. Again, I think that they're really feeling the pain and wishing they had delayed the game, of course. Now, something interesting happened with Young Ye as well. You guys probably know who he is, YouTuber. Uh, he actually unlisted his Cyberpunk 277 review, recently citing it being too positive. And he also discusses, you know, some changes that he's gonna be making about his review process. I feel like a lot of these YouTubers uh, that got to see the early stuff with Cyberpunk, um, you know, they were shown a slice of the game that was really well optimized. Um, and, you know, I've been in situations like that too, where it's very difficult to judge uh, the game, but it's good to see that he was honest about that and unlisted his review and is reflecting on that, of course, going forward with future reviews for content. But, you know, some of these companies can be very, very sneaky and uh, with how they do the review process, uh, which I just do not like whatsoever. Um, yeah, so I remember when I covered uh, Battlefront, for example, Battlefront 2, we were not allowed uh, to see the monetization process 
whatsoever. We weren't told about it. And you guys all remember how Battlefront 2 turned out. And a lot of Star Wars YouTubers or people that were focused on Battlefront were really caught up in the crossfire big time over that one. Now, a lot of you guys also want to hear more about Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, right now, I'm noticing the way CD Projekt Red is communicating, in my opinion, is still... Uh, leaving a lot to be desired. The reason why I say that is because first and foremost, it seems like they want to communicate to investors over their fans. They're doing quarterly calls. We're getting all the new details from that. We're not getting new details uh, when they are speaking to us, the people that actually purchased the game. So we have an upvoted uh, topic here, nearly 30K upvote says, it's been a while, could we hear more about some progress? You got, You all got any more of those? Patches, hotfixes, DLCs, updates for next gen, or general communication to the community that still supports your game. I I feel the same way. Like it really irritates me when a company uh, shuts down communication directly with their fan base, and they're like, oh, you know what? We'll still communicate with investors though. So that really annoys me about the current cyberpunk situation right now. Now, I did a recent video about cyberpunk. Uh, on May 5th. Man, it's almost been a month since I've done a Cyberpunk video, but you guys had some comments about what's going on with the game. Here is my recent video right here. It says, big new update, first DLC teased, Afterlife expanding, new comments from CD Projekt Red. So if you didn't hear, uh, it looks like uh, the Afterlife of Cyberpunk 2077 would be expanding. I think this is going to be part of the smaller updates that are coming. Perhaps new little quests here and there. I don't think it's going to be anything major, but it seems like, to me, the source of the free updates and DLC might be the afterlife. Uh, so let's see what you guys had to say about this one right now, shall we? Let's review the comments. Now, Rod Rob says this, I really want to like this game, but I'll be back in three years when they pull a No Man's Sky. So hopefully they actually pull that off. That'd be cool. Uh... How do you say this? Thetis says, the traffic system, driver AI, and pedestrian AI needs an upgrade big time. Hell yes. Juicebox says, someone at CD uh, Project Red farts. Hey, everyone, it's Overworld Games here. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've been covering other games, uh, including, you know, Outriders, Bio Mutants. So, yeah. Uh, James says, I saw a Kotaku article where the dude said they should just abandon CD Projekt Red and move on to something new. I was just sat awestruck at the stupidity. If CD Projekt Red abandoned the game, I bet that'd be the death of the company. No one would trust them after that. Yeah, um, you know, that would not be smart at all. It just seems like it's a practice to create a game, uh, you know, get the pre-orders in, have a rough launch, get a skeleton crew working on that game to uh, fix it. You know, for how long, however long it takes, years, but at the same time, probably what's happening with uh, the CD Projekt Red crew is they're working on new projects. Most of them are probably working on new projects or something, considering that they have a strategy of developing two new AAA titles in 2022, I would, I, I, as I recall. So that's what they're doing uh, right now. So it just seems like a practice. Hopefully, you know, they can get past all these uh, patches and fixes and get us that new content soon. But thank you all so much for watching a brand new update about Cyberpunk 2077. Again, I really want to see something that's a blog post that's addressing the fans that purchased the game, that laid their money down, and are still waiting and be believing or trying to believe in CD Projekt Red instead of this BS where they're addressing investors first. So hopefully that happens. We'll find out. I'll keep you guys in the know. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more, and I will see you all next time. Take care.